previously we have seen our student and teacher class without inheritance now we're going to see the inheritance and we have uh, the inheritance coding in here so here is my student class which is inherited from person and I haven't included the namespace to include the namespace I'm just put my mouse cursor and press control dot to uh, import the namespace and here I'm saying that uh, OP dot polymorphism that's it so that's my person and same thing I have to do for the teacher class and when I do that a reader will be gone and here I'm achieving the same thing but I'm not copying the same thing from the person class uh, in the previous example as you've seen that I have copied these properties but the fields but here I haven't copied those fields I've just by the extended field and it will work just fine as before so let's see some of those in action so this time because it's in the different namespace as you can see that the namespace is different so be uh, inheritance so I have to initialize uh, or import that namespace namespace and if I really display it I'll have the same thing so this time I really don't have to write the repeated things so thanks to inheritance so I hope you understand this concept let's uh, move on to our slide you can create your super class or parent class or base class from your subclass or child class uh, if you think about it the super class the person have some properties let's say a or the first name first name if first name and if you remember from the previous slides student also have first name but it also have some extended properties so the student got more properties than the person a person requires some of the properties from the student so the parent class or the super class can be created from its subclass or from its uh, child class so you can create a person student from a student class or instantiate a person class from a student class you can do the same for the teacher as well but if the types are not same let's say uh, that you want to create a teacher class from a student class you will fail and it's also vice versa if you really try to create a student class from a teacher class you will also fail so another thing that you cannot create your super subclass from your super class so that's very interesting so as I've said earlier that a student class have all the properties of person plus it has some extended properties so it really needs those extended properties to instantiate by a person but a person has less properties than a student so a student class cannot be created from a person class and so if you try to create a student class a student object from a person class you will fail and if you try to create the teacher object from the person class you will also fail so calling the base class constructor let's say you inherited a class but let's say you have a class a and a is inherited by class B and you really want to call the constructor of class A from class B how can you do that so let's see some example in coding so we are here in Visual Studio and we are with our person class and we have inherited the student from the person class so let's write a simple uh, constructor in the person class just like this that just display that the person is created yeah I mean wrong class so 
that's it uh, now let's go over to your any of the inherited class and write your constructor CTAR. so how you can call a base constructor it's really easy write the base and that's it a base constructor will be called so if you really want to if you really have uh, multiple constructor it will be very helpful so if I run my project you'll see that person is created so if you remember from the first lesson uh, or first examples of class that uh, the constructor will always be invoked uh, implicitly or explicitly so we really don't have to call the uh, constructor these explicitly for the basic or uh, for only the uh, first constructor it will be always called uh, implicitly so if I run I will get the same result so it will be helpful when you have multiple uh, constructor we are going to talk about multiple constructor later in this video so let's say I have an example uh, and uh, in example I have class A, class B and class C and class B is inherited from class A and uh, class C is inherited from class B and I really want to call base methods from these inheritance so let's see some examples I have a definition of class A and I have a walk method base walk so it will call the work method and let's say I have another example of uh, these dot work so see the difference between these and base this is uh, all about this lesson so when I call this it also calls the uh, work method because there is no inheritance there uh, so when you call base first name it's just called this these first name all this same but differs when we call in the inheritance inheritance section so if we call now base dot what it will mean that uh, point to the function to your base class or the inherit uh, parent class that's it so when we say this it means a method inside this class not outside of the class but this class so this what means this method if we call this from this B class you have to understand that so if we say that uh, based on first name it will represent the first name from the base class or parent class and if we say these dot first name it will represent these first name so let's say I have C plus C which is inherited from plus B of course so I made a mistake so Let's pretend that it's really uh, inherited from class B and when we call that base dot what we call the base method of its parent class and these means this method and base means the parent class's first name and these means these classes first name that's it so this is about the base and the, these example that how it differs from one another we really haven't talked about modifiers access modifiers in details and this is the time that we're going to talk about in details of access modifiers so uh, I really uh, conclude those details from MSDN and uh, I rewrote those in my words and some of those are hard to understand from this written description and as you can see that I have made also a pyramid so where you can see that the public has no restriction and private has all the restrictions and uh, in this topic uh, when you see the assembly uh, it says the assembly only the assembly means that it uh, only works for a single project so in a solution Visual Studio you could have multiple projects and if you remember from our project we have 
two projects one is a class library and another is console application so a project means the assembly file for simplification we are uh, just understanding that uh, when you compile a project you'll get assembly file it could be exe or dll uh, and whatever it is it is just an assembly and we are really interested in that assembly so let's go to visual studio and see some coding about access modifiers 